Welcome to the to another instalment of classic Maltese recipes from the 1950s. This soup to me, and I'll tell you the history of it pretty soon, but to me it's about pure nutrition. Uh, very, very rustic. Okay. I love it. I don't think that many people out there in you know, YouTube land or wherever you are watching this are going to make it, but I'd love to find out if you do. It looks strange, it looks weird. Even as an eight year old, I could go, gee, the smell, what the hell is that? Cheese, eggs, meat, vegetables, sometimes pasta. It's frightening to look at, uh, that eight year old who's used to whatever chicken nuggets is gonna look at that plate and go, mum, what the effing hell is this? But um, I'm going to cook it for you anyway. Good luck. God bless. Hope you enjoy. Till then. I like the story behind it. And I think it's almost, uh, I hope it's almost historical from a different time when people actually care for one another. When people would help each other. And sorry if that sounds soppy, but it's just, that's just uh, the way I feel. Soup I'm making today is called Sopa to Amla. Pardon if the expression or the uh, pronunciation isn't good, any real Maltese people there. Uh, it's called Widow's Soup. Now I learned the history of this soup when I was living in Malta as a young guy for about eight, nine months. And I was living with my cousin-in-law and my cousin and his wife, Anna. And she told me about it. And she told me about how rough and hard it was in the 50s after World War II and that there were a lot of widows hence the widow soup. And these widows would, uh, you know, really have struggled feeding their kids. So in desperation, they would knock on a neighbor's door. Knock on a neighbor. um, you know, neighbor, neighbor, look, I've got to feed the kids, I've got nothing, can you help me out? Right? So the neighbor would be obviously poor as well, but she goes, look, I've got nothing, but here, here's some cheese, okay? she knock on the next neighbor, Look, I haven't got much either, but here's some eggs. Uh, next day, the neighbor might have given some corned beef. Anyway, so she got a disparate or disparate or whatever it is, a variety of uh, different ingredients. What's she gonna do? She makes a soup with them, okay? Now, again, this soup is not gonna look that special. It's, you, you're just not gonna go, oh my God, look at that classic French onion soup and look at the sopa to alma. Okay, they don't look the same. One looks better. But as far as nutrition, as far as feeding your kids, and as far as all that history, I'd put this soup of Dalma against any other soup. Okay, maybe I'm being a bit one eyed Maltese, maybe I'll take it off and stuff like that. But that's why I feel. If you're still watching it, obviously, <laughs> uh, you might have a soft spot for it as well. But um, welcome, Maltese Widow Soup, Sopa to Alma. One part that I should explain about the soup. Normally Maltese people use Maltese cheese in the soup and they'll just drop these lumps of cheese, called Spainiet, into the soup. They'll put enough soup, uh, enough cheese in there so each person having a bowl of soup actually gets a Spainiet or Spainer on their plate. Don't have any today, but what I'm gonna, what I've done is something a little bit different. Uh, I've seen the Oracle do this numerous, numerous times. Half a kilo of ricotta, two eggs, salt and pepper, and a good bunch of parsley. Mix it all up, uh, let it sort of gel together. Uh, what we're gonna do is plump in, uh, put these into sort of balls, and we're gonna drop these in at the last minute when we're making the soup. And we're gonna make sure everybody that eats the soup has a lump of ricotta cheese in there. Water's boiling, so it's time to put in the ingredients. Three medium-sized potatoes cut pretty coarsely. Two carrots cut in bite-sized pieces or spoon-sized pieces. One large onion diced. A bunch of celery stalks that I've put in there just because they're good for you and they clean out your kidneys and livers and all that kind of stuff. Three cloves of garlic. One 
beef oxo cube. Kathy Stone's favourite, curry. Two teaspoons should be plenty. <laughs> I'm throwing a mash it. And, of course, that Maltese ingredient that is uh, uh, sure to, uh, yeah, to put some people off. Can of corned beef. That corned beef will kind of break up as, we, as it cooks. And the last ingredient that I actually didn't add before, I didn't tell you about before, is tomato paste. You want to do enough tomato paste to give it a red colour. So one, maybe two, about two and a half tablespoons. Uh, if it needs more, we can put in later. The soup has been going for about 20 minutes. We ended up adding salt and pepper and uh, a little bit more curry, just another teaspoon of curry. Now it's time to put the cauliflower. So we'll put in the whole cauliflower. Cut in big bits, okay? You don't want the little bits because it's going to break down. So you want it in big pieces, okay? So nice, look at that, all right? So no little florets, you want the big pieces. It'll break down into little florets anyway, so that's what we're doing. I'm going to put in the two marrow, the baby marrows that I just bought out of nowhere. Don't know if, whatever. Just over a cup of frozen peas. I'm going to give that 10 minutes. Give it a stir around. We're going to give that 10 minutes. And then we're going to come back to it and start doing our egg and cheese con concoctions. The cold flour has been cooking for about 10 minutes. Now it's time to put the eggs in. What you're trying to do here, you leave the egg as it is in a yolk and you put in the whole thing in. You want it to solidify as an egg, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe like poached, maybe. Uh, but it's actually going to be a hard-boiled egg uh, without the shell, right? So when I put these in, I can't stir them, so I sort of put the eggs in, in different spots and give it about five minutes, and then lo and behold, you <laughs> actually have hard-boiled eggs in your soup. Here we go, fast and loose. The Oracle reckons put it in a cup and then drop it in. How many are you going to put in, babe? Uh, I've only got six left, so I'm going to put in six. Your oracle goes as much as eight. But um, again, old Wog, I think they had it in their heads that uh, whatever you're doing, if you're feeding the kids, put an egg in there and it'll be great. So, kind of makes sense. They didn't have whey protein powder or protein balls those days, so it was old school egg in a soup, smash it down the kid's uh, gullet, and they're doing what they can to make that kid healthy and strong on a budget. Now don't forget, we don't have the we don't have the jubanet here, so we don't have the cheese, the Maltese cheese. So we've made the ricotta cheese concoction. Uh, Maltese love ricotta cheese, so that's fine. Uh, I was being nice and polite and PC and not using my hands to put the balls together. Uh, but I've given up on that already. So these are actually a bit moist, so I hope they stay together. My mum's ones stay together. But, um, yeah, let's hope these ones don't. So, what we're doing... Just lower them in, maybe. Is just... Sorry? I said just lower them in, maybe, with the lid. Yeah, label. just lower them in. Put one in there. Bingo. Or not. <laughs> we'll see how we go. I tried to call her while I was cooking. 
just to see whether she actually uh, drained drained the cheese while um, let's go making these. But she didn't answer. A little bit moist to me. I'm not sure if this one's going to turn out lower like my mother's does 100%, but we'll be gentle and we'll let it go. Now what she also does, um, or on occasion anyway, she will boil some pasta in another bowl uh, or in another pot and she'll thicken the soup up by adding a little bit of pasta into it uh, at the same time. So instead of cooking the pasta in it so that it becomes a sloppy mush, cooks the pasta separately and adds it just before she's going to serve to warm it up. Another way to do it, maybe the kids would like that, not sure. I did. Here we are. Soup's finished. We here just just about to show you. This time, look, I haven't made the oracle proud. My cheese balls didn't hold up as well as hers. She failed to tell me that you should drain the cheese a little bit before you um, mix all the eggs in and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, so but still really tasty. Again, most of the Maltese would use a spainet or a spainer, so it's a whole piece of cheese and it doesn't break up. So what you've got here is basically flavoured. Uh, bit of flavoured uh, ricotta cheese sort of floating around in the soup. The traditional way Maltese and my mother would eat it, they'd take out a big chunk of uh, cauliflower, one egg, jbainet, they'd eat that and then they'd put the soup around it. So what you've got here is a cheese, all right, you've got a whole egg, that's the way it comes, it actually looks, you know, like a whole egg, massive pieces of, uh, what's it called, cauliflower that you sort of just break away. Uh, she would just have those main ingredients on the plate first, drizzle a bit of olive oil, a bit of bread, eat that, and then eat the soup after that. Uh, you can see that it really looks like a concoction, doesn't it, right? It's not the prettiest of thing. It, uh, look, let's say it puts the rustic in rustic, okay? When you've got corned beef, carrots, peas, cheese, vegetable, dairy, and eggs in the same concoction, and don't forget I didn't put any pasta in this one, uh, all you can do is call it rustic. Um, I would have liked maybe some more, some broad beans in there as well. I reckon that would have been nice. I know some other uh, recipes that I've seen put in something called jidra, which is, uh, oh, I forgot the, uh, the English version of it. It's like a turnip. It's like a turnip. It's a root vegetable. Uh, it's got a distinctive taste and they put that in there as well. But uh, yeah, this is why I like it. The flavours are nice. Uh, presentation was never going to be good, um, but otherwise, yeah, too good. Cheers, mate. Uh, nothing left to do, but um, looks like crap, but it tastes really good. <laughs> no, it does, it, it, it actually tastes good. Uh, enjoy, try to make it. Uh, don't be put off by the way it looks. See if you can get the Maltese cheese and have a crack at it. Uh, if, if anything, you'll just be healthier for it, okay? God bless. That's nice. Well, that's, actually, that's actually nice. Looks like shit, but it's nice. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs>